Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. On that same night that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, he also prefigured the death by which he would make atonement for the sin of the world. This is the means by which he purchased your salvation. Jesus is the bread of life. His life and his grace are that which sustains our soul and spiritual life as we follow him through life. His blood is drink indeed, and in that it is the only thing that can cleanse our souls from the presence and stain of sin. As we partake of the elements of the Lord's Supper, we commune with him individually and as a congregation and give testimony that we indeed have experienced salvation from sin. We have been washed in the blood of Christ, and we are continually sustained by his ever-present grace and love. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus commands us to take, eat, and drink. In doing so, we take the element, elements with a sense of sacredness as we remember the body and the blood of Jesus in which he suffered, not just in the crucifixion, but in taking upon himself the responsibility of our own personal sins. The elements are not the literal body and blood of Jesus, and in no wise are they present therein. But yet a solemn charge is laid upon those that partake of the Lord's Supper that they truly possess the experience of salvation of which they testify upon the pain of divine judgment. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks 
judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Let us bow our heads in reverence, ask the Spirit of God to search our hearts and show us personally that we are right with God. Our profession of salvation is true and unsullied and that through the blood of Christ, we are indeed worthy to partake of the Lord's Supper.